Hello and welcome to Skitty Animates. I'm Skitty and today I'm going to talk about lead and follow. Learning how to animate a character is by no means an easy task. It takes a lot of time, dedication, and studying of real world reference. Being able to animate good isn't the whole picture. What makes the difference between someone who knows how to animate and a good animator is the ability to make the character feel like a real living thinking person. The more real a character feels, the more the audience will gravitate and relate to that character, leaving a lasting impression. The start of learning this begins with lead and follow. Lead and follow refers to the order that parts of the body start moving on a pose shift. Humans don't move their entire body at the same time in real life. So making an animated character move this way takes away from their realness. A simple phrase to remember while animating is thoughts before actions. Our bodies can't typically move until our brains tell them to. This means that the first thing to move will be the face. The brain thinks of what it's going to do, the face reacts to that idea, then the eyes move to look at the goal, then the head, the spine, the hips, and lastly the feet, if applicable. It's really that simple. If we were to dive deeper into the terms, lead and follow can also refer to secondary animation. This applies to things like hair, clothing, and tails. The lead, in this case, would be the body, and the follow would be the affected secondary object. The way you would animate these secondary objects would be the same method we talked about in the spacing and overlap video. I'll put a link in the description if you'd like a more thorough explanation on that. But this method would be in part understanding how gravity affects the object, and also using your artistic sixth sense to feel out what looks right. The key to this, in the sense of hair, clothing, and tails, is to watch how your animation moves and treat it as the force that pulls the secondary object to its destination. This object is not the driving force of the movement, but more so a reactionary object. These objects should be ignored almost entirely until the body's movement is finalized. This Kayla rig has ponytail controls, so let's look at this a little closer. First, she has a thought. Then we see her eyes start moving, then her head, her chest, and her ponytail drags behind. The bangs, you can see it's mostly affected by the body pushing down, and the ponytail having more weight to it is mostly affected by the head turning. Both methods are right, so try both and see what looks right in the context of your animation. Also, because hair is so light compared to the rest of her, it will take much longer to settle into position. This example is exaggerated in how much it moves for the sake of the explanation, but the timing is more or less accurate. And this is what that looks like in real time. That's all I'm going to say about lead and follow for today. If you have any questions or a topic you'd like me to discuss, please leave a comment below. Like and subscribe if you found this video helpful at all, and a link is in the description if you'd like to follow me on Twitter. Until next time, thanks for watching.